Introducing the Coyote One Closure from Preform Line Products. The closure's compact size, hinge collar system, and innovative patented segmented end plate design make this new closure the only one to choose. The Coyote One can be configured with three different fiber organizers. The Universal Organizer, designed to support buffer tube and or ribbon applications. The Buffer Tube Organizer, created to support high volume of express storage without sacrificing splice capacity. Or the Cross Connect Organizer, which provides the ability to support internal connectorization. Mounting options include an offset aerial hanger bracket with adjustment capabilities for strand mount applications or ADSS mount applications. Mounting hardware is also available for pole or wall mount and below grade applications. The standard Coyote One kit includes dome, collar, end plate, organizer assembly, gasket, three grommets, a small parts bag containing cable restraint hardware, and the application procedure. Additional tools required for the assembly are a 3 8 7 16 can wrench, snips, and standard fiber optic cable opening tools. Prior to insertion of the cable into a grommet, measure the cable to confirm the cable diameter. Wrap the measure tape around the cable until tight and determine the measurement at the vertical line. If your application requires a cut cable, insert the cable through the desired grommet hole and install the plug into any unused hole. If your application requires express, balloon, or ring cut cables, you need to conduct the following grommet slitting procedure. Review the grommet chart provided in the application procedure for the proper slitting location. Place the grommet on a stable flat surface. Mark the slit location on the top surface of the grommet. Position a utility knife with the cutting edge against the top surface. Press firmly on the knife until the blade has cut completely through the grommet. If your installation uses figure eight style cable or cable with a tracer wire, the tracer wire or ground wire must be removed prior to insertion of the cable through the grommet. The correct installation method is shown in the highlighted green images. For cables used in a branch, drop, or end of reel installation, measure and mark the cable jacket and remove a minimum of 64 inches of cable sheath. Follow your standard company practice for sheath removal. Leave approximately 8 inches of cable strength member to be trimmed later. For cables to be used in an express, balloon, or ring cut application, the amount of slack cable stored within the closure can be adjusted according to the type of installation. For applications where the buffer tube or ribbon cable will be dedicated to the splice point, place two marks on the cable sheath 64 inches apart. This measurement reflects the ideal amount of cable that can be placed within the closure for this particular application. Remove the cable sheath over this section of cable using your standard company practice and unbundle the buffer tubes. Select the desired buffer tube to be spliced and cut at the sheath opening, location A, as shown. Leave approximately 8 inches of strength member to be trimmed later. For applications where the buffer tube or ribbon cable will not be dedicated to the splice point, place two marks on the cable sheath 110 inches apart. Remove the cable sheath over this section of cable using your standard company practice and unbundle the buffer tubes. Select the desired buffer tube to be spliced at the top of the express loop, location B, as shown. Leave approximately 8 inches of strength member to be trimmed later. The buffer tube or ribbon to be spliced in this application will be cut at location B as shown. For applications where fiber to be spliced will be pulled from a buffer tube being expressed onto the splice tray, an additional measurement to identify the buffer tube window cut is required. For this type of application, either size of sheath opening can be used. 
follow the sheath opening step, place a mark on the selected buffer tube 15 inches from the edge of the cable sheath opening. Make a window cut between the two points indicated as C in the image. Remove the buffer tube over this section using your standard company practice. If your application involves ribbon fiber with a central tube, measure and mark the central tube 2.25 inches from the sheath opening and remove the central tube past this mark. If the cable being used contains Kevlar, braid approximately 3 inches. This will be used later to secure the cable. Align the cable sheath opening with the bracket as shown. Place a mark on the strength member at the end of the bracket. Cut the strength member at the marked location. Install the cap and nut on the strength member bracket. Position the strength member under the cap of the strength member bracket. To secure the strength member, tighten the nut using a can wrench until fully engaged. If your cable contains Kevlar, Wrap the braided Kevlar around the strength member cap stud. To secure, tighten the nut using a can wrench until it's fully engaged. To secure the cable sheath to the strength member bracket, install the hose clamp around the cable sheath and strength member bracket. Tighten the hose clamp until the cable is secured against the surface of the bracket. If shielded cable is being used, Install the shield connector per the manufacturer's instructions. Insert the stud of the shield connector through the slot of the strength member bracket. Secure the cable strength member below the strength member cap. Secure the shield connector to the strength member bracket by tightening the nut against the bracket surface. Visually inspect the buffer tubes against the shield connector to confirm they are not being compressed during the tightening process. Secure the shielded cable against the strength member bracket using the hose clamps provided. Lubricate the outer surface of the grommet with the silicone lubricant provided. Prior to installing the grommets, remove the end sections of the end plate so the organizer will be stable during assembly. If your application uses slit grommets, Visually inspect the grommet orientation prior to the insertion into the end plate to confirm the slit will not align with the end plate seams. Position the grommet above the end plate port and firmly insert the grommet into the end plate. Pull the cable outward so the ground stud passes through the bracket slot. Install the lock washer and nut and fully tighten against the surface of the bracket to secure the cable into position. Place the end cap over the grommet and secure with the hex bolts provided. Using a can wrench or a socket driver, hand tighten the bolts evenly until the cap is fully seated. Do not use power tools to tighten the bolts during this step. The end plate is fully seated when the sealing material on the bottom surface begins to flex outward. Insert the drop cable through the holes in the drop grommet. Repeat this process for each drop cable entering the grommet. Prepare each drop cable by removing the cable sheath a minimum of 64 inches. Trim the strength members as shown. Align all ends of the drop cable strength members as shown. Insert the drop cable bobbin between each of the buffer tubes. Slide back towards the grommet face until the drop cable strength members are in contact with the bobbin. Install the hose clamp around the bobbin and tighten to secure the drop cables. For cables entering the closure in the outer cable ports, place the leg of the bobbin in the slot of the strength member bracket and secure the strength member bracket on the ground stud. For cables entering the closure in the middle cable ports, Place the leg of the bobbin into the slot of the bobbin bracket as shown and secure the strength member bracket on the ground stud. Place the center end plate cap over the grommet and secure with the hex bolts provided. Using a can wrench or socket driver, hand tighten the bolts evenly until the end cap is fully seated. 
The end cap is fully seated when the sealing material on the bottom surface begins to flex outward. Do not use power tools to tighten the bolts during this step. Route buffer tubes in the storage brackets as shown. Route buffer tube up to the splice tray and secure to the tray. Route fibers on the splice tray and splice for your accepted company practice. Install the protective cover onto the splice tray. Install the splice tray onto the organizer. Secure the tray to the organizer with the hold down strap. If you're using a buffer tube cable in the universal organizer, Secure the buffer tube brackets with the lock washers and nuts provided. Route buffer tubes in the storage brackets as shown. Select and secure a buffer tube to the splice tray and splice per your accepted company practice. If your application uses ribbon fiber, remove the buffer tube storage brackets from the transition tray. Route and secure the central tube of the ribbon cable to the transition tray with tie wraps. Route and store ribbons within the transition tray. Once several coils of ribbon have been stored in the transition tray, install the organizer clips so the ribbon is captured below them as shown. Select the ribbons that will be brought up to the splice tray. Cut a piece of transport tube to the dimension shown. Insert the ribbon fiber completely through the transport tube. Secure the transport tube to the transition tray with tie wraps, as shown. Route transition tubing up to the splice tray and secure. Route ribbon fibers on the tray and splice per your accepted company practice. Install the protected cover onto the splice tray. Install the protective cover onto the transition tray. Install the splice tray onto the organizer. Secure the tray to the organizer with the Velcro strap. To separate buffer tube cables from ribbon fibers in the transition tray, install side storage clips to the bottom surface of the transition tray. And route the buffer tubes through the clip. For cross-connect applications, measure and mark each pigtail to the dimensions defined in the application procedure. Install the pigtails into the light grip, two hole retention sleeves, or wrap a bundle of six together with the blue felt provided. Route the pigtails up to the bulkhead as shown. Install the pigtail connectors into their respective adapters. Before installing the sealing gasket onto the end plate assembly, lubricate all inner and outer surfaces of the gasket with the silicone lubricant provided. This step assures easy assembly and re-entry. Slide the sealing gasket over the fiber organizer with the large flange facing forward. Insert the gasket flange into the channel on the end plate assembly. Press firmly on the outer surfaces of the gasket to confirm the gasket is fully seated. Prior to inserting the end plate organizer assembly into the dome, retighten all the end cap bolts to assure that the end caps are fully seated. Slide the end plate organizer assembly inside the dome. Install the dome collar. Before completely closing the collar, visually inspect to confirm the lip of the dome is fully captured by the collar before securing the latch. Complete the assembly of the collar by hand tightening the fastener or by using a can wrench. Once the collar has been fully tightened, flash testing the assembly is recommended. Remove the cap from the air valve located on the end plate. Using a controlled air source, slowly pressurize the closure to a maximum of 5 psi. Confirm the pressure within the closure using an air pressure gauge. 
Spray all of the end plate and collar surfaces with soap and water solution and visually inspect for bubbles. If small bubbles around the end plate cap or grommet occur, this indicates the end plate caps have not been properly tightened or the cable is not the proper size for the grommet selected. Release the pressure from the closure using the bump on the top of the air valve cap. Pull the end plate organizer assembly out of the dome and retighten the end plate cap bolts where the bubbles occurred. Reassemble the collar and conduct the flash test procedure again to confirm the issue has been resolved. Always relieve the pressure within the closure before leaving the job site. Secure the collar by placing a tie wrap or other locking device through the hole in the collar flange. A full line of mounting hardware is available for the Coyote 1 closure. For aerial applications with limited space below the attachment point, PLP offers a low clearance aerial hanger bracket. Bracket kits are constructed to support strand mount applications. Or if your application involves ADSS cable, a low clearance bracket for ADSS applications is also available. If your aerial mounting location contains other cables, PLP offers an adjustable offset hanger bracket kit for strand mount applications. And a bracket kit to address offset conditions with ADSS cable installations. For pole or wall mount applications, PLP has created a bracket that permits the dome to be removed to access the interior splice without removing the entire closure from its mounted location. For below grade installations, PLP offers the universal mounting bracket kit. Once the bracket is simply installed to the side wall of the handhole, the closure rests within the bracket and the cover is locked into place to keep the closure secure. This concludes the installation video for the Coyote One closure. 